Hi everyone, my name is Frank Walters and tonight I'm going to teach you how to do the uh, really cool double exposure effect. I hope you like this tutorial, it's going to be a pretty long tutorial because uh, there's a lots of steps that we need to do. But I think you'll like it, uh, I'll go slow so that even new beginners can um, can learn how to do this and, and, and do it pretty well. So I hope you enjoy the program. Also, uh, I just published our book, the Pixelmator Pro Manual, so I would appreciate it. I would love it if you find it on Amazon and pr make and purchase the book. You can purchase the book in print form or as an ebook. And when you purchase it, it supports this channel and it supports myself and my family. So, thank you very much for your time. I hope you enjoy the video. Bye. Hi, welcome to another tutorial. My name is Frank Walters and today we're going to be doing the double exposure effect in Pixelmator Pro. For this lesson, I'm going to try something new. I'm just going to read from my text that I wrote in my book. And that way you will know exactly how to do this lesson in a very easy to understand and follow our step by step method. So let's begin we want to change the image of the man so that he is facing to the right so the way that we do that is that we go to the menu bar at the top where it says image click on that come down to rotate image and then flip horizontal so now our man is facing to the right how easy is that Next, we're going to make a selection of the man and his hair. Pay attention to how we do this. Pixelmator Pro makes it simple. So come over here to the tools and click on the quick selection tool. And you click on select subject. So go ahead and click on that. Because the background is all one color, it's quite easy for the software to do a good job. So now we want to press on select and mask. And we want to click on Smart Refine. Okay. The overlay is set to default. Let's go ahead and change that to On Black. And the output is set to Selection. We want to change that and change it to New Layer with Mask. So click on that. Good. And now we want to come down here to where it says Apply and press that button. So now our background is removed next page let's go to the tools and click on the rectangle shape tool here let's say you have the ellipse shape tool active instead so you just want to click and hold click on the rectangle shape tool release your button on your mouse and now it's active and then we want to change the color to white so come over here to the rectangle tool options pane right here Click on the color well. Ours is currently white, but let's say yours is like red, okay? So you click on this color well, and you click and drag your mouse's cursor onto the top left corner. Click again on the color well to close that window. And all right, so now we have a rectangle shape that's about to be drawn. We don't want a stroke. We want the color to be white. So now we just click and drag a rectangle over the entire image. So top, start here, come down. There you go. If your rectangle is larger than the image, let's say like this, you can just click and drag on this node and bring it back. Good. Now we want this to be the background. So come over here to the layer sidebar and click and drag the rectangle layer at the top. Click and drag it to the bottom. Watch for that blue line. Very good. So now our man is cut out. You can click on, you can turn this off, you can see it. So our man is cut out, and we now have a new white background layer. So now to tidy up our layer sidebar, we're going to double click on each of these layer names, not the mask layer, and rename them. So click on the rectangle layer, double click, and type background, and then press the return key. Good. Next layer. Double click, we're just gonna say man, return key, 
top one, click on that, double click, change it to man copy. Make sure you say man copy, super important. And then press the return key, good. Now for the next step, you wanna make sure that your top layer is clicked on and active. If you rename your layers in a different order, that's okay as long as you have the same names. But let's say this layer is now active. We don't want that. So you wanna make sure you click on the top layer so it's active and highlighted. You see the difference? This is highlighted, this is highlighted. Good, now we wanna to go to the mountain image. So click on this tab. And we don't wanna do anything here, we just wanna copy it. So press Command C to copy it. Come back to our man's image and press Command V to paste it. Now what we're gonna do here is that we're gonna rearrange this image so that it fits, the, the mountain fits on top of the man. So first we need to change the opacity of this layer. So come up here to where it says opacity at the top of the layer sidebar and change it to 50%. Very good. You can also double click here and type 50 and then press the return key if you know exactly what you want, and we do. So now to resize this image, we want to press the V key on our keyboard to activate the Arrange tool. Let's so do that now. And then we want to click and drag these white nodes so that the mountain fits better on our man. We want the mountain peak right here, you see it right there, to be at the top of the man's head. And I'm gonna zoom in and we want the brow to be covered by the mountain shape like that. You can see the man's brow, right? We want it covered and that's good like there. That's, that's perfect right there. So now we wanna change the opacity back of the mountain layer back to 100%. So change the opacity back to 100%. Okay, very good. Now we're gonna double click on this mountain layer to rename it. So double click and type mountain. Press the return key. Okay, so right now our top layer is active. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna hold down the command key and we're gonna click on the man copy mask layers preview thumbnail. Currently we only have one mask layer so we know it's this one, all right? But it, it, it's read very specifically the man copy this layer Man copies mask layer preview thumbnail. So you hold down the, so this, make sure the mountain layer is active. You don't want to click on this, okay? Make sure the mountain layer is active. Hold down the command key. You go and press it now if you want. Come down, move your cursor to the mask layer preview thumbnail and click on it. Good. And when you do that, look at the image. You'll see the image of the man. It has a selection going around it. All right. Very good. Let me turn the page here. This tutorial has seven pages of, of instructions. So now we're gonna go to the layer sidebar and right click on the mountain layer and select add mask from the pop-out window. When you do this, pay attention to what type of mask is created under the mountain image layer. It's the man and not the mountain. This is because we did the previous step. So. Come up here to the mountain layer, right click, or if you have an Apple magic mouse, you wanna do control click and do add mask. Very good. Now we wanna click on the top man's copy layer so it's active here. And we wanna duplicate it. So press command J to duplicate it. So now we have man copy and man copy two. Okay, so now we wanna click and drag the man copy two layer to the top of the layer stack. I call this the layer stack because layers stack on top of each other. <clears throat> so click and drag it to the top. Watch that blue line to appear. There you go. We're gonna change the blend mode from normal to lighten. So these are the blend modes. Change it from normal to lighten. And then we're gonna change the top man's copy layer to 50%. 
Then we're going to click on the top man copy to mask layer preview thumbnail so only the mask layer is active. Then we're going to select the paintbrush tool by pressing the letter B on the keyboard and changing its color to black. So come over here to the right side and the color is black. Let's say your color was red and how would you do that? You could press the D key on your keyboard to read back to default black and white and then you could press the X key to alternate the black and the white. And we want the color to be black so it's black right now. We want to change the opacity of the brush to 100%. So come down here to the tool options and change the opacity of 100%. And then we want to paint over the entire image to remove any part of the man. So make you do that. You can make the image brush bigger by pressing on the right bracket key and make it bigger. There you go. Now we want to go to the layers sidebar and click on the mountain layers mask preview thumbnail so it's active. Mountain layers mask preview thumbnail. It's very important to make sure you do this step here. Now we want to go to the tool options and we're going to change our brushes settings. Next page. We want the type to be soft basic. So basic, soft basic. It doesn't matter which one. I mean, so soft basic. Double click on that. The color needs to be black. The size should be 400. Ours is 400. The softness should be 100%. The opacity, 1%. So normally this would be like 100. So you can just double click on that, type one, and then press the return key. And then we want the brush spacing to be 0%. If you don't know where the brush spacing is, it's under advanced settings. The way you get that, yours might be closed like this. So you want to click on this little menu icon, come down here to the brush setting, make sure this is 0%. Now let's change this brush setting to 40%, just to show you what brush uh, spacing is. Brush spacing, so if you click and drag your brush across the image, it's gonna look like this image here. And we don't want that, we want a smooth brush. So make sure that the brush spacing is at 0%. Very good. Now what we're gonna do is that we're gonna paint over the man's facial features so that they return. So just click and drag over the man's facial features, mostly his eyes, nose, mouth, and chin. So I do it one time. Then you want to release your mouse button and do it again. Let me zoom in. I guess I, okay, that's fine. And then you click and drag again and more of the man's image will come back. That's because the opacity is at 1%. So every time you click and drag on your image, more of the man will come back and less of the mountain. So I like just the man's eyes, nose, mouth, and chin to come back. Okay, very good. Now we're going to press the, come over here to the layer sidebar and click on the background layer. So it's active. Press the S key on the keyboard. Let me resize the image, it's a little too big in our face here. So you press the S key on the keyboard so that the styles tool is active. Then you want to click on the color picker icon, which is this. This is a this is a color well here. This is the color picker. So click on that. And then its cursor. I'm gonna move the cursor over. You can't see it yet, but when it gets on the image, you'll see it. So this is the cursor here. We want to move it so that it's up in the blue area. So the cursor, the bottom part, shows it the current color in the color well on the right side in the tool options. And the new color, the blue, where we're at on the man's picture, is at the top part of the color picker icon. So you just want, so this is just, it just tells you what color you're choosing. So click one time on that. And because our background layer over here in the layers uh, sidebar was active, it changes the background color to that color. Good. Now we want to come up here to the layer sidebar, to the mountain layer. Click on that. 
and you want to duplicate it. So you want to press Command J to duplicate it. Very good. Now we want to click on the Mountain Copy Layers Mask Preview Thumbnail right here. Click on that. And we want to press the Delete key. So press the Delete key. So now we just have the picture of the mountain in front of us. Now we want to change its blend mode from normal to lighten. So come at the very top here, from normal to lighten. Click on lighten. And we got to turn the page again. Okay, the next step is to, to, to talk about what we're going to do before we do it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to right click or control click on the mountain copy layer. It's currently active. That no longer has a mask layer. We're going to hold down the option key as you click where it says add mask. All right, so that's not so difficult. So right click or control click on this layer, the mountain copy layer. Move the cursor down to add mask, but don't click on it yet. Hold down the option key and then click on it. Very good. Now we want to click on the Mountain Copies Black Layer Mask Preview Thumbnail. It's currently active, so you don't have to. We want to press the B key to activate the paintbrush tool. We want to come over here to the Tool Options pane and click on the Color Well icon and change its color to white. So you can click on it and change it to white. Or if it was black, you can also press the D key and then press the X key. So now it's white. And we want to set the opacity of the brush to 100%. So change the opacity to 100%. And we're going to paint back in the clouds so that the image looks really cool. So come over here to the image and click and drag and paint the clouds back. Does that look cool? At the top here too. But good. Well, okay, so I, I painted in some of these mountains here. I don't want those mountains. I want to get rid of those. So how do we get rid of those? All we got to do, because we're painting on the mask layer, all we have to do is change the color of the paintbrush. So come over here to the paintbrush tool options, click on it, change it back to black, click on the color well to close this window, and then paint away those mountain peaks. Okay, very good. Our image is almost done. So now let's crop our image so we get rid of this bottom part here. So press on this C key on your keyboard. And all we're gonna do is just move the crop up a little bit, just below his chin. That looks good right there. Come over here to the tool options and press the apply button. The image is now centered on our screen, which to me is way too big, so I'm gonna make it smaller by pinching with my fingers on the trackpad. Okay, we are almost done. I say we have two more pages to go, so let's keep going. Let's go to the Layers sidebar and click on any of the layers. So any of the layers, it doesn't matter which one. Well, it kind of does, but it doesn't matter. So let's click on the top one here so that we're, we're doing the same thing together. And we're gonna merge all of these layers into one layer. The reason we're going to do this is that we want to desaturate the image so that the color is taken away and it's just in grayscale, kind of like an Ansel Adams picture. Okay, so the way that we merge everything is that there are two ways of doing it. We can come up here to the menu bar where it says arrange and at the very bottom to click on merge all. Whenever you do these um, actions from the menu bar, on the right side it always shows you the shortcut. The shortcut is shift option command and then you press the letter E and then it will do a merge all action. So just, let's just click on this right here. And when we do this, watch what happens to the layer sidebar. Everything is gone. So we, all we have left is the man copy two. Very good. So now we're going to change, we're going to desaturate this image the way we do that. Ooh, I accidentally pressed with my trackpad the button. So we want to, so we made a mistake. So the way we get rid of that, you press Command Z to remove it. 
There you go. It's super easy, but you got to be careful with the trackpad. I just got a brand new trackpad, so maybe it's a little bit more sensitive than normal. Okay, so now we want to come over here to the tools, to the color adjustments right here. Click on that one. Okay, my hue and saturation is currently active. Let's deactivate that. And let's say you have like color balance open. We don't want color balance, so just click on the color balance button to close it. Click on the hue and saturation button. And all we're going to do to desaturate an image is click and drag the, the saturation slider all the way to the left. And that's it. So this is our image now in black and white. It looks really good. I don't like the hair up here, but I think it looks really good as it is right now. Okay, so let's 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 make it better. Let's um let's get rid of this hair. So the way we do that, we're going to add a rectangle another rectangle layer to our image. So click on the rectangle tool here. Okay? And then we want to click and drag the rectangle over the entire image. Then we want to go to the layer sidebar and click and drag the rectangle layer below our merged layer. Then we want to press the S key to activate the style tool. And then click on the its color picker tool right here and click down here in the bottom corner of the gray area. So before I do this, I want you to pay attention to what we're doing. So look at the layer sidebar. The rectangle layer is currently active, but we can only see the top layer on our picture here. So we have the style tool activated with the color picker also activated. So when we click here, the background rectangle layer is going to change this color. So just go and click one time on that. So now you see that it's the same color. And that's what we want because we're going to mask away the hair. So now we want to right click on the top layer and select add mask. This is what you're layers sidebar should look right look like right now good now we want to press command zero to resize our image so it's in the middle of our screen we actually want this because we're going to be painting away this part of the image here so now we want to press the b key on our keyboard to activate the paintbrush tool we want the color to be black it is the size will vary on what we're doing. Right now it's 400. You can see my cursor. It's way too big. I'm going to press the left bracket key to make it smaller. I think that's good right there. Okay. The softness, we're going to change it to 75%. So click on there and, and type 75 and press the return key. The opacity, we're going to change it to 30%. And the spacing, very important, make sure it's zero spacing. And you can press update here if you want because that's the brush that we're going to be using. Now what we're going to do now is that we're going to paint away the man's hair from the image. So I'm going to click and drag and you'll see it disappear. See it disappear? So you want to make sure that you're doing small brush strokes to remove the parts that we don't want. We just want the, um, the mountain here. So I'm going to zoom into the picture and I'm going to make my brush smaller and I'm going to go along the edge of the man here. So maybe a little bit bigger to remove that part. This part of the lesson is very tedious, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick I'm gonna stay with you the whole time, and we're gonna do it together. Uh, it makes the video a little bit longer, but that's okay. This is his hair here, so let's get rid of that. That's good. We don't want it in a circle, and then just paint over again. Do you want to do small brush strokes so that if you make a mistake, you can you you can delete only what you painted over and I like to zoom in as close as you can and do a really good job it's good I like to get rid of these uh, this white fringing around the, the 
the man here. We, we're almost done. I'm going to press Command-0 to show you the image. The image is currently done. All I'm doing now is making special refinements. Oops, it looks like we got rid of some of our mountain peak. So the way we get it back is that we change the color of the brush. So press the D key on your keyboard and then press the X key and you'll see that the color changes back to white and then you can paint in the mountain back. Is that the mountain? No, that's just his hair. We don't want that. So press Command Z to get rid of that. So that is the mountain peak there. Okay, so I didn't know that. So we want to continue working. So you want to make sure that the brush is black again. So press the X key and then continue working. He has this kind of this white, I think it's a shadow here. I don't really like it. So I'm going to get rid of it. That's a pretty long brush stroke. Okay, shorter ones. So I tell you guys to do shorter brush strokes and I do long ones. So that's kind of stupid. That's good. Get rid of that glare. Make the brush a little bigger. I don't like this white fuzziness here. So I'm going to get rid of that. I don't like this. I'm going to cut his hair. So I don't know if I'm allowed to do that, but I just did. So because I'm the one who's doing the tutorial, the, the, I mean, the, the effect, you know, I have control over what it looks like. And the same thing for you. You have total control now to make the image look as however you want it. So I don't like the whiteness here. So I'm just going to kind of get rid of that. And I'm going like to trim his beard a little bit here so it looks a little bit cleaner. Like that. On the back of his head, he has his hair hanging down. I'm going to get rid of that too. Okay, we're almost done here. Okay, we're done. Now that's the effect. A little bit right here. Sorry, I'm a little bit of a, of a perfectionist here. I'll press. So let's press Command-0 to recenter our image. And now we're done. That's the effect. So we're, we're done with the lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I apologize it took so long, but it's necessary that we go over every step so that you know exactly what you're doing. Well, thank you very much for watching the video. I would love it if you leave some comments in the section below so that I can read them. And if you have any other effects that you would like me to do, please tell me and I would be happy to do those effects for you. Okay, this is Frank Walter signing off. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.